look at their pain points and create solutions as opposed to like creating burdens and saying you have to do this or add extra time here mm-hmm. um but but they love the experiences i mean you know children are wonderful they, yeah. they 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 were on it like right away they'd be like can we do this ourselves can we build headsets you know things like that <laughs> wow. and i'm like yeah yeah we're getting there <laughs> Um, so, so that was the, the early start, um, going to schools, doing sessions with students and teachers, giving them experiences of the technology. Hello, my name is Chiweze Hibuzo, and this is the Experience Board, where we discuss emerging technologies, trends, and their impact on the business landscape in Africa and across Nigeria. After years of research and development, extended reality, com- commonly referred to as XR, and metaverse technologies have become more accessible to businesses and individual consumers. For those who might not know, um, extended reality is the family name for virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality technologies. According to MarketWatch, the XR market was valued at approximately $25 billion in 2019 and is expected to reach approximately $346 billion by 2026, representing a compounded annual growth rate of 46.5%, making it one of the fastest growing emerging technologies in the world, second to artificial intelligence and machine learning. With Facebook's change to Meta and new Metaverse platforms popping up daily, it has become essential to acknowledge the importance of the XR ecosystem and how it's affecting or how it will affect our lives on the African continent. Um, The African XR ecosystem has been on the rise for the last few years, with more and more African XR creators joining the ecosystem and more Africa-centric XR products and events being launched. I mean, we've heard about numerous XR hackathons sponsored by the likes of Facebook and and Google across the continent. This episode of the Experience Pod focuses on understanding the XR market in Africa and its potential by speaking to Judith Okonkwo, a formidable force in the African XR market space. She's also a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Future Council for Virtual and Augmented Reality and the founder of Emisi 3D one of the earliest virtual reality brands in Nigeria. Welcome, Judith. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure. Great. So we'll just get started. So let's start with some background, some background just for those of us who might not be familiar with you, Judith, and some of the things you do. Could you tell us a bit more about yourself and Missy 3D and, you know, your journey? What, what led you to founding this um this organization in in Africa? Sure, of course. Um, So the first thing I have to tell people when they say, how did you get into XR is to say, I'm a psychologist. I don't have a tech background. Um, I'm actually a business psychologist. And that was what I was doing professionally for for several years. Really? But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, there's like a counterpoint to that. One, I've always been interested in technology and the future, really passionate about it. I was one of those children that was like, yes, when I grow up, I'm going to be going to the moon on vacation, you know, that sort of thing. Space travel. Yeah, I, I'm all about that. I really am. Um, so, so I've always had this sort of like really keen interest in, in technology and the future. Um, and, you know, I was, a, a few things kind of like brought me here. So, so one, um, I was in London. Um, I was working at British Airways. I was doing organizational intelligence there. But... Um, I was also trying to do a PhD and study leadership in Africa. And it it kind of seemed like if I was studying leadership on the African continent, I should probably be on the African continent. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) So so, uh, I started exploring different African cities. Uh, I was really fortunate to to travel, um, to go to to Addis, um, to, um, to, to Nairobi, to Accra, to Lagos. And, and you know how Lagos is. It was just the softest landing because of heritage and a few other things. Um, and I met some really incredible people. So this was um, early 20, January 2014, you know, when wow. I think there was this renaissance happening mm-hmm. in the tech ecosystem. And Coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I met a, a lot of the players then. In fact, um, I met um, someone you might have heard about, um, Ino Lua Boyeji. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Ino, he's actually been on the pod. Oh, OK, brilliant. Yeah. So, this, so this was just before, um, this was when he was still doing Fora. Ah. Um, and the transition was happening to Andela. And when, they t- when he told me about Andela, I was just like, this makes so much sense. Whatever I can do to help, I will. Um, so I, I took on paper from BA and I, I came and spent a year in Lagos um, helping Andela get uh, started here in Lagos and in oh. Nairobi. Yes. And, you know, I mean, 
I'll just kind of like track this back to, you know, the work that I was doing around leadership in Africa. One of the things that inspired that was in my professional practice as a business psychologist, I would often come across people who would complain about trying to do business in Africa. You know, Mm -hmm. we can't find talent, you know, we can't find leadership talent, managerial talent, like, you know, all of those sorts of things. And I would always think, I mean, uh, most of the Africans I know are some of the smartest, most hardworking people you will ever come across. So what is the problem here? And for me, it was that leadership was only being looked at from a certain paradigm, like how could we expand the body of knowledge? So that was what was driving me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned that because um, one of the first things that I did with, with Ian and Della was recruiting their first full cohort. Oh, wow. And it was really mad because um, in one week we interviewed 98 people. Jeez. Yes. <laughs> how how did that happen? I, I don't, you know, I, th- that's like a story for another time, even where we did it. It Honestly. was literally crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, till today, I still talk about those people that we interviewed. They were the most phenomenal people I think I've ever encountered. Um, just to give you some examples, there were people that, I, and remember this was a time when Andela didn't even have a proper website, mm-hmm. right? It was just a promise then that even if you've never written a line of code before in your life, We'll make your world-class developer in six months. That's what that's what we used to say. And there were people that traveled from the north, took an overnight bus, wow. came to Lagos for the interview, had nowhere to stay in Lagos, and took an overnight bus back. Wow. Like that was the kind of grit and determination that we saw. Like people really hustling to be able to, to access opportunity. And for me, like this is now set against the context of, you know, the emergence of virtual reality in the consumer space. Because as we know, there was the Google Cardboard coming out Mm -hmm. around 2013. There was, you know, then Facebook's acquisition of Oculus in 2014 and all the buzz that created. And by 2016, you know, the world media was saying, is this the year of virtual reality? Um, For me, I was just like, I just want to get my hands on virtual reality. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, And in 2015, Samsung had launched, you know, the Gear VR. I was... First in line, like, let me get my hands on it. And once I did, you know, it was a game changer. Wow. Because, you know, I'd wanted to get the DK1, the the Oculus DK1, and Mm -hmm. I I wasn't able to make it. So I was like, I must get the Gear VR, and I did. And once I put it on, and and for me, I mean, as a child, yes, I was imagining space, but with this headset on, it was just all our futures, right? Mm -hmm. That were kind of there. So I thought, can you imagine combining this technology and this amazing talent and potential on the continent, won't we change the world? Wow. You know, and yeah. that's, that was really sort of like the beginning. How can we then make sure that people have access to this technology across the African continent, that the really remarkable young people that I know, I mean, you know, and Della had already proven can do incredible things mm-hmm. with technology, um, that they can be able to use this technology too and start to leverage it for our own grand challenges on the continent. Um, so I talked about it and I talked about it and then it was like, well, somebody had better do it. And so I started doing it and it was literally the simplest of starts. I mean, I, I had that gear VR I got. Oh, really? So I, yeah. I thought you would say it was a difficult start. You know, we yeah. normally get that. No, it's no, the... no. I say simple, not in the sense that it wasn't difficult, but that it was the most basic, uh-huh. you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I went on Amazon, you know, I ordered like an Alienware, like computer. Right. Um, I ordered some books by Tony Parisi, you know, Introduction to Virtual Reality. I, I went to Costco and I bought a carton of Kit Kats. And um, okay. <laughs> a friend of mine was um, person, is the CEO of um, Co-Creation Hub. So I, when I told him what I wanted to do, he's like, oh, you know, Judith, you should come here. Um, set up on the sixth floor because the kind of people you want to attract, they come here a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, great. So I got all of that equipment. I set it up. I had a bowl on the table with chocolates. And you know how it is. Everybody would be like, hey, can I have some? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. And then, and have you heard of virtual reality? Ah, Try right. This, so this the sales thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 <laughs> there was some reason to it, you know. And and that was just the beginning, you know. Um, that really, really um, simple start. Um, but we we started. It was sort of like literally the first week in July in 2016. Um, we set up there, people would come, we'd give them Kit Kat, and they'd try VR. <laughs> they'd go like, wow, you know. I like this uh, Kit Kat know? and VR. <laughs> right? <laughs> they'd be like, you know, so so um, there was this um, Oculus 360 um, experience there where you could like explore the world. Um, and it was all these 360 experiences of different cities around the world. And people would be like, oh my God, you mean I can travel without getting a visa? Like I can literally sit here and go anywhere in the world. 
And from there, it just started. Um, the next week, we had sort of like our first showcase. Um, and we were fortunate then to be able to have the then VR consultant for the Institute for the Future in Palo Alto kind of like Skype in to, to do a session with the oh, folks wow. who were attending. We had little gadgets to play with. There would be our headsets, the Rico Theater 360 camera, you know, different things just to get people talking, get people excited. So, mm -hmm. so it began. Um, but for us, the goal had always been not for people to just come and experience the technology. Um, like I said, there was definitely something around that, you know, allegiance to the narrative of becoming creators and not just consumers of technology. So how can we get people to build? And for us, one way we know is hackathons, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that I personally knew a lot about XR hackathons, <laughs> so I did a lot of learning, but we were like, we're going to do a hackathon. Um, and and in, in November of that year, we had a, the, what you know was the first VR hackathon, certainly in Nigeria, some people say in West Africa, you know, and all of that. Nice. Um, yeah, so, so that was the beginning. Okay, wow, that's a very interesting, uh, you know, origin story, so to speak. Um, so just, just out of curiosity, you know, now that you've now been in the space for what, about five years now going on six. six? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what, in your opinion, would you say, what impact do you think XR can actually have in, in Nigeria? I mean, I mean, what are the sectors, what sectors do you think, are you seeing any sectors that people are sort of leaning towards, you know, adoption or actually in, in your own view, actually, let's not even follow the Nigerian market because it, mm -hmm. it's still sort of very virgin, mm -hmm. right? What do you think are the three sectors that could benefit the most from, from the XR um, space? Um, locally. So if it's Nigeria specifically, I would say right now there is tremendous potential um, when it comes to training. Mm -hmm. And this is training across all sectors. So you look at training in sort of like high risk environments and high cost environments, you know, um, things like virtual reality and mixed reality are game changers there. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, you know, training where you are in really remote locations where mm -hmm. Um, people can get access to experts um, and, you know, mixed reality, virtual reality, these are able to kind of like, you know, make that distance disappear, so to speak, you mm -hmm. know, and literally put you in rooms and spaces where you can get the very best in terms of instruction. Um, it also is able to create all sorts of experiences that take training to the next level, you know, so as opposed to being in a traditional classroom, for example, Absolutely. or doing 2D learning, you have this immersive, truly experiential experience mm -hmm. where there are no, no holds barred. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like anything that's possible. And, and one thing I always like to remind people is when we think about virtual reality, of course, now we say emerging technologies, things like that, but these are technologies that have been around for 60, 70 years, being that's used by yeah, yeah. NASA, mm -hmm. the US Air Force, and it was specifically for this purpose, training. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think there are tremendous use cases there um, okay. with the technology for that. I think education is another place where it will be a real game changer. Okay. I think if you look at the disaster that is education in Nigeria right now, um, <laughs> and, and disaster for a few reasons, uh, you know, that we'll get into later. But um, I, I think that there's a real potential here for VR to start to bridge that gap and get us closer to SDG4. Mm -hmm. um, and then... The other sort of like area, the third area I want to mention, which might not sound kind of like intuitive off the top of, you know, um, my head is, is storytelling. Okay. I say storytelling because... Is that you know, marketing sort of? Is that... So, so that's the thing. I think storytelling is so broad that so many things come under it. Mm. You know what I mean? So we can think about, you know, more traditional storytelling that we might see with, you know, like films or you know, movies, that sort of thing. Okay. But storytelling is also what brands do. You know what I mean? Um, storytelling is also what we do with our heritage sites, you know. So I'm using storytelling as a catch-all, <laughs> so I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think that storytelling uh, is going to be very, very powerful. And I say that because storytelling with these technologies will allow us to significantly shift that narrative, you know, mm -hmm. globally about what it means to be African, Absolutely. you know, and how we represent ourselves. Great, great. So, I mean, um, so let's maybe park on the education, uh, what you said about the education mm -hmm. and the impact on education. I know that in 2017, you spoke at uh, TEDx, um, where you talked about the impact um, XR or virtual reality could have in, 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 in Africa. Um, but I also know that you have a VR for school initiative. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. And maybe, you know, talk to us about how you got into TEDx. <laughs> Okay, so, so it was actually TED Lagos, um, and, and TED Lagos was, um, in 2017, was 
um, an event held in Lagos by by the Tech Global Organization, mm-hmm. um, and they were looking for for speakers from the African continent. So okay. I think there was a TED Lagos and a TED Nairobi that year. Nice. Um, and, and you applied to, to speak. So I applied and I was quite fortunate enough to get selected. Okay. And you're quite right. I was talking about VR for education because, I mean, you know, I talk about when I first got that Gear VR right away, um, it, it showed me like a little bit, and I say really stress a little bit about what was possible with this technology. Um, one of the experiences that you could have on the Gear VR then was this experience called In the Body VR, where you were literally inside the human body, like exploring it. You, wow. know, you know what I mean? Wow. And it's like... A bit like Osmosis Jones. I don't know if you've yeah. seen that cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just these little things where it's like, boom, you're like totally blowing people's minds. Wow. And this is me as an adult. Imagine what it will do for children. Yeah. Imagine how will it, it will expand their worldview. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, when it came to education, I considered like the local context, right? Mm -hmm. If you go into a public school, basic infrastructure, tables, chairs, maybe a black or white board. Student-teacher ratio, maybe 80 to 1. You know what I mean? And we know that we don't have financial resources in the educational system for things like school trips. Most schools will not have fully functional and well-equipped, you know, labs for the sciences, things like that. So I said, well, hey, what if in these schools we had VR labs? Now, I know a lot of people were like, wait a second, VR labs, you know, you're crazy. This is expensive. expensive, We don't know, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) But challenge there, I said, hey, guess what? If you compare the cost of a VR lab to the cost of a traditional computer lab, the VR lab, if it's low to mid-cost VR, Mm -hmm. is on par or lower. Really? Yeah. So think about how much does a PC cost, right? Yeah. And then how much is a... Uh, Oh, well, fair enough. You you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And not only that... So and that's recent, though, right? Because I know that... No, but there was mobile device-driven VR before. Like, there were the, the, the Oculus Go as well was coming out, you know, around ah, that time, right, things right. like okay. that. So there were options. Apart from that, think about having a computer lab. Mm-hmm. Then think about our power grid. And you know that... Well... <laughs> you know, your computer lab might be there just for decoration. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you yeah. have mobile device-driven VR, like these all-in-ones, you can charge them with a solar portable. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, there were all of these... Um, there were all of these solutions attached to using, you know, VR. VR. Plus you have experiential immersive learning. So you can't go to a physical lab, but, you know, you can do all of those experiments, you know, in an immersive lab. Mm -hmm. Endless supply of chemicals. Mm -hmm. You got it wrong. You spilt it. Well, try again. You know what I mean? (laughs) No call. You know, all of that sort of stuff. There's that. Um, And, you know, your students can literally walk through the pyramids of Egypt I mean, yeah. I've been to see the pyramids. I was just outside. They were way over there. But in VR, I could actually go into a tomb. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like all of these things possible so that for children, we were starting to like close the gap between what you would get in an elite private school mm-hmm. and, and make it available to, to, the, masses. Know, yeah. to the masses. Exactly. Wow. Um, wow. So for me, I think in that way, VR can be completely transformational for education and of course, we all know what education can do for society. Mm, I absolutely, I agree with you. Um, especially on the, I mean, I, what you said about you know walking through the pyramids of Egypt. I think as soon as you said that, re- what resonated to me with me was the storytelling bit. And mm-hmm. if you think about the Nigerian story in terms of our history, our heritage, and imagine telling that story in an immersive sort of yeah. an immersive way, and what it would do for learning and fantastic. I, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful technology. Yeah. So. Do you want me to? So, okay. Sure, so, so I mean, yeah. So just to the VR for Schools initiative. So, so we kicked it off in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we did, we, uh, we spoke to the education district. We, we, you know, we got contacts for some schools in, in the local Yaba neighborhood where our lab is. And then we, we started to go in there, meet the teachers, okay. do like sessions with the students. Mm, what was the, what was, just curious, what was the first sort of reaction of like this, this woman has come with VR? What? <laughs> How well, what well, was the reception? Well, well, you know how it is. Like, you know, people are pretty open. Like, oh, what is this? You mm-hmm. know, like just first of all, is is it going to stress them? You know what I mean? <laughs> and if it's not, <laughs> if it's not, then it's OK. And and no, to be fair, like, I think what our teachers have to put up with all the props to them. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. I've been in academia a little bit and like marking the scripts. I'm just like, <laughs> and then I think of 80 students and I'm already running in the other direction. Yeah. So, so I really give them props. Um, so it was really like, can we go in and look at their pain points and create solutions as opposed to like creating burdens and saying, 
you have to do this or add extra time here. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they love the experiences. I mean, you know, children are wonderful. They, yeah. they, they, they were on it like right away. They'd be like, can we do this ourselves? Can we build headsets? You know, things like that. <laughs> wow. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Um, so, so that was the, the early start, um, going to schools, doing sessions with students and teachers, giving them experiences of the technology. Um, and then we were really fortunate um, that in um, the end of 2018, going into 2019, uh, we, we partnered with UNICEF as part of the UNICEF Innovation Fund. Mm-hmm. And we were then able to um, specifically create virtual reality content matched the Nigerian curriculum in three subject areas. Um, so, so this was work we did in 2019. Uh, we were co-creating this with a, a local school in Yaba Junior Secondary School okay. um, and just did that work. And then the pandemic hit. So it's kind of like been on pause. But the idea is that we can then go back into schools mm-hmm. and do a proper, like robust pilot study. So yeah. we can then say, here's empirical evidence of the effect of VR as a learning aid on learning outcomes. Because I think that's the kind of data that people need to be able to say, yes, let's embrace this and scale it out widely. Yeah. No, I think even from a PWC perspective, we we have some sort of data that shows that VR, people tend to learn sort of at um, X times three with with, with VR, right? But I think it would be useful to have local sort of study to to see the impact on the local, um, you know, the local community. Great, great. So interesting. So one question, though. So how did you fund all of that? I mean, because... I'm thinking VR schools. Hmm, this is gonna. You need a budget for that. So <laughs> how how did that happen? Like honestly. Oh, are you a phil- I don't know. Are you into charity? Am I a mad woman? <laughs> 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 because those are the kind of questions I got. You know, um, honestly, starting out, I, I told you I just went on Amazon and I started ordering stuff. I really started out bootstrapping. Oh wow. Um, yeah. Um, and, and when we we're first going into the schools in 2017, I'd be like. Yeah, how much you know, does it cost to like you know get people in a guy that kind of thing, and we just mosey on down and do that. Um, so that was a lot of it. Um, but we um have been fortunate to get support for some of our initiatives. So for example, the first hackathon that we did. I mean, you mentioned that mm-hmm. you know Facebook um has sponsored and Google have supported some hackathons um on the continent. Most of those are our hackathons. <laughs> okay. Um, so Facebook supported that very first one. Um, the the work that I told you around the creation of the modules, sure. we had um, funding from the UNICEF Innovation Fund. Um, so there's been sort of like programmatic support for some of our initiatives. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the rest, it's like us saying, we just got to do this well, somehow. Do. Mm-hmm. And look for partners like, you know, PwC, hopefully, yeah. who will support us as we go on. No, yeah, well, I think we're all about that. Education and uh, using VR to solve important problems. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we've talked a lot. I think what we haven't really... Amadon here is on the role the government can play or is playing. I don't, you would know you'd be in a better position to foster sort of XR growth in, in Africa. I don't know if you have any sort of views on that or anything. Uh, I, I, I have, well, probably quite strong <laughs> views. <laughs> strong views on that. Um, so, um, so, let, so let's leave out the role the government is playing because, yeah. Let's leave that out. Okay. And, and let's go to what should be Next done. Next question. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's go to what should be done. Um, so, so I think, I mean, first of all, I say that we've been fortunate to get, you know, um, sort of like programmatic support for some of our initiatives, right? But one thing I should also say is that it is nothing like what I expected when I started out. Okay. I thought that there would be a lot more sort of like global inclusion for XR, you know, mm-hmm. that African XR would be something that people were excited about. And that wasn't actually the case. Mm-hmm. And that lack of excitement was not just in the other part of, in other parts of the world. It was also locally. You know okay. what I mean? It was like, what's this thing? Oh, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, why are you guys doing this thing? Yeah, you know? Nice to have. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like not, not especially critical. Um, and... I mean, I'm someone, you know, even back then, I think even though people were, you know, debating what the killer use case would be for VR and things like that, mm-hmm. one thing that everybody would agree on, there was this consensus that spatial computing was the computing platform of the future. Mm-hmm. So there was this inevitable match for humanity, right? Like yeah. going in this direction. And for me, it just, it was a no brainer for us to to want to make sure that we were part of that. Um, so from a government perspective, I think that, Given how difficult it is to do XR, if you're in an African city, you know, African country, and, you know, we know the challenges that are for everyone, like electricity and connectivity. Mm -hmm. Um, But then think about additional challenges, like the fact that 
XR hardware is not available locally on the continent. Yeah. So, for example, if you want to buy a Quest 2 or a HoloLens, you're either traveling and bringing it in or having it shipped in. And by the time it gets to you, you're paying almost double what someone in London or New York or wherever they are would pay. Wow. When you consider the purchasing power of the Naira, yeah. you know we have a big problem, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so there's that, first of all, that the government, I think, should really be thinking if this is the computing platform of the future, in fact, the computing platform of now, mm -hmm. right? What can we do to incentivize this space to help our people participate and participate on a global level? Because we must. We really must. So, so, you know, I think when you look at like incentivizing the space and creating an enabling environment, there are so many things that support that. There's work that has to be done in terms of ed ed educational curriculum. Mm -hmm. There are policies in terms of like, what does it mean to start an XR business? How do we create sort of like, um, con um, <laughs> the words escape me now, right? Mm -hmm. But concessions and things like that, right? Okay. That would support people and encourage them. Do we waive duties? Do we give them tax benefit? Like, what do we do mm -hmm. to say to people, please come in? How does government have conversations with big tech to kind of like change these restrictions that, are, you know, exist in yeah. terms of accessing the technology? Um, and what else do we do to sort of like help people understand that if you want to get started in this, you know, we will support you. We will, and this is something that I think is really, really critical on the African continent. We will create space for you to play and experiment because that's something that traditionally we do not have the time or money, money to do. It, yeah. And it's so, so important with a technology like this, right? Yeah. So, so important. So, yes, there's definitely a whole lot that must be done. Okay, okay. Um, so that's, I think it's, this leads nicely to my next question. So in 2021, you were part of the XR Innovation Week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you had, you mentioned there around how billions of dollars being billions of dollars are being invested in the XR space globally. Mm -hmm. But you also said that you know the African ecosystem is not even getting any yeah. of those sort of investments. And so my next question is why why do you think that is, and what do you think we need to do to be able to tap into that yeah. that huge purse? Because I mean Africa is a big market. You know uh, you would think that it it will be a market that would be considered. Um, you know, by the, by, by the global sort of XR space and you being yeah. in that space. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's such a great question, right? Um, so a, a couple of things that I just want to highlight here in response to that. Okay. I think there's some sort of like parallels between the way the world perceives Africa when it comes to XR, or certainly the way they did perceive Africa when it came to XR, okay. and the way the world perceived Africa when it came to mobile phones back in the day. You know what okay. I mean? Where okay. it was like them... Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with it? You know, <laughs> you know really, that was, <laughs> they might not have been saying it out loud. Not directly, but, but yeah. But, you know, that was friends. like really the sentiment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so there's definitely some of that. And um, to give you some context in terms of like the money, right? Um, so I said billions and billions being invested um, in the global XR space. And it is crazy money, you know? <laughs> and I say crazy money because... If you think about us in, in, in Africa, we're celebrating like a bumper year in terms of investment, mm -hmm. you know, in 2021, yeah. which is approximately $5 billion, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and the year before was maybe half that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's good. That's good. But like, I'll give tell you about one okay. XR startup, Magic Leap. You know how much they've raised? Five billion? No, no, <laughs> okay, no, no not right. quite. But three point five billion. Wow. You know wow. what I okay. mean? Just one one startup. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Three point okay. five billion. And you know, like think about that crazy money. Think about the fact that Magic Leap is not in a store everywhere right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That there's a lot being put in so that people can like really research and experiment and create like the next frontier when it comes to how we will interrogate information and communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And that like I say, not even <laughs> but but it's changing. I mean, I think it was particularly dire, like when I started. Mm -hmm. um, but we have definitely seen some changes happening. So so let me give you know the flowers where they're due. Um, 2018, for example, Facebook um, started the FB Start program, okay. and I like to say that um, that is probably one of the first accelerators that was specifically focused on deep tech. You know, so for the first time, somebody was saying, "Hey, if you're doing VR." Or AR, we want to hear about you. We want to support you. 
Um, it was small ticket, you know, like, you know, 5000 if you're a student, undergraduate, you know, mm -hmm. 20000 if you're a startup, that sort of thing. But still, still something. It yeah. was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this is a game changer. So that was that. Um, of course, we know uh, Microsoft opened their ADCs mm, yeah. in 2019. And woof, I mean, they're actually mixed reality teams in African cities, you know. Yeah. That that's yeah, that's definitely, something, right? <laughs> that's definitely something. PwC has an has XRT, XRT, you yeah. know. So that's definitely changing the game. Um, but when you think about, I think how much is needed to move the needle, and I can give you one example. Um, when I started, ambitious Judith, uh, one of my first goals was like, oh, let me try and um, get things together. I want to train a thousand XR developers, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, this made sense because we need talents if this ecosystem is going to grow and go anywhere. Absolutely. And then my model for, for training talent was, well, okay, we know a few things work, like combine really great like learning um, with mentorship, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. and create this package. And at the time, Udacity used to run a VR nano degree. So, so back then, in fact, we even like offered a few scholarships for it, you know, um, to our community. But my goal was like, what if I can have a thousand people through this really robust like Excel program? They do the nano degree. They do maybe like three months of work experience, you know, like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The VR nano degree at that time cost a thousand two hundred dollars. Right. And, and um, think about my one thousand people. So that's already like one point two million mm -hmm. off the bat, you know. Then, then, you know, think about kind of like trying to do the mentorship and all the other bits. So let's say roughly maybe I need two million for that program. I can assure you that two million has not, you know, gone through my space and, you know, yeah. over all of these years. Yeah. And if we don't have that kind of dedication to advancing the space, then we have a real, real problem. Mm -hmm. But I think as the world starts to realize, I mean, you know, props to like all the metaverse, like hype and everything right now. Mm -hmm. The talk is happening. And I think as the talk is happening a number of other things have compounded um, the, the position we find ourselves in in terms of this this moment in time with XR. Um, so there's the pandemic, of course. Um, there are things like, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. you know, as well, where, uh, you know, in this, in, in this most, you know, unexpected of ways, we were moved to connect virtually. People started to talk more about these technologies. Mm -hmm. People also started to think more about black people, especially if they were, you know, big corporates. Yeah. Um, and also Africa. I mean, Africa is always rising and falling depending on the time of day. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, Africa, you know, Africa's technology talent is certainly making its mark, you know, it on is, the global yeah. stage. And yeah, I think yeah. when you bring all of this together, then there's been like this kind of, you know, kind of like shift like, oh, that continent over there. Yeah, not bad. You know, maybe we should. <laughs> maybe we should have a look. So so I think there's a bit of I that. We have to pay them as much as we pay our <laughs> yeah. well, well, we'll get into that later because, you know, yeah, yeah, lines are being drawn. Okay, okay. So we'll come to the metaverse conversation later. But um, mm -hmm. uh, can we talk a bit more about the Global Future um, Council on, for, for AR and VR? And just maybe tell us a bit, you know, what... what what, what your role is there or, or what's the council's mission or yeah. activities yeah. are and you know do you have anything i guess it's global but do you have anything focused for africa you know in terms of products anything exciting to look forward to <laughs> um so so first of all the world economic forum just to give you some context has several global future councils okay. um, focused on sort of like different you know areas i mean we are augmented in virtual reality okay. but the councils on everything from 5g to the environment to you know you sure. know what i mean like endless um the council is this um really interesting mix between sort of like a think tank but like i suppose an expanded version of that so we have representation from almost every continent you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and a variety of sectors so we have academia represented big tech we have you know people doing community work we have creators like it's this really vibrant diverse you know um group mm -hmm. that really has um i would say i mean <laughs> i'm a part of it so, so maybe it sounds like kind of a, a bit self-selling but like really like innovative and inspired thinking around um, the technologies. Mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, cross fertilization of ideas that I think gives it, it gives it its richness. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what we do, so you'll see us um, doing things like putting out position papers um, 
or sort of like learning resources. Now, these might be for the World Economic Forum specifically, or sometimes they might be more widely available. Um, certainly, we will have conversations um, or provide content that helps people understand, mm -hmm. you know, the technologies more, um, provide different perspectives on it, also be future looking um, and and even start to say, hey, what is it that we should be thinking about sort of like going, I don't know, five years into the future or 10 years into the future. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, will represent the World Economic Forum's Forum um, at different events. So mm -hmm. uh, an example, um, the Global Technology Governance Summit, like last year um, in Japan, uh, we mm -hmm. had like representation there, that sort of thing. So, so it varies widely, um, but we're not so much a a group that is putting products out or, okay. or things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think it's really more around bringing these diverse perspectives from um, sort of like all elements of XR possible together okay. to help shape thinking. Okay. So it's really just to drive awareness uh, and the thinking around these technologies across mm -hmm. the different the different uh, different countries in, in Africa, I guess. Or it's no, global. No, no, it's global. Yeah. It's global. So, so not even specifically Africa focused, but I think what's really beautiful about it. Um, so... I'll probably tell you some of my highlights. Okay. <clears throat> um, on the council, we have um, an incredible woman, um, Michaela Jade, who okay. is um, um, from Australia, First Nation Australian. And she has done, I mean, sort of like literally game-changing work, um, taking mixed reality to indigenous communities. Wow. Uh, and not just taking it to indigenous communities, but also bringing the wealth of knowledge and wisdom from indigenous communities and bringing that perspective into the technology. Um, and I think that we, you know, as a world, we tend to think of the technology as only the here and now mm -hmm. and not really connecting it to sort of like, you know, um, our heritage and indigenous knowledge and all of the wealth that that brings into whatever we're shaping for the future. And, and her work is sort of like a real, you know, kind of like spotlight on that and what is possible when we do that. Okay. Cool. So when it comes to XR hardware, right? We, I mean, you already hinted the African ecosystem is sort of, I mean, I know we're behind, but we're like really, really behind uh, from a hardware perspective. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts about, I mean, about that? I mean, are there any sort of R&D, do you know any R&D companies that are looking into that, maybe using recyclables, I don't know, to, to, to just create that sort of aware, um, you know, just create, not, not necessarily awareness, but just create that um, affordable gadgets. I mean, I know it's the prices have come down, you know, but I mean, we're, to we're talking affordable, like something the guy on the street can afford, yeah, right? Yeah. Is there any, do you know any companies doing things around that? Uh, is that something the, I don't know, the, 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 the your, your, your forum is also um, looking into the council, the, the global future council? Um, well, not the council specifically, but let me tell you about what I know is happening on the African continent. Okay. And probably I should start this conversation with one of our fields at Simisi 3D. Okay. So very early on, it was clear that, you know, we have to do something about the hardware problem, you know. Yeah. And we were thinking very hard about what it might look like to have a, a locally manufactured headset. One mm -hmm. that was, you know, as you say, reasonable price points, accessible locally, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we, we partnered with Hardware Lagos to do a design challenge because, okay. you know, that was the first step. Can we even design, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a VR headset? We had parameters that I thought were really important. It should be solar powered, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it should be an all-in-one headset as well okay. um, and all of that. So we tried to do this design challenge remotely and we did it. It, did, it didn't really get off the ground. And, and one thing I learned from that was next time I want to do a challenge like that, I have to be able to bring the people to get, yes, yeah. create a space for them, support mm -hmm. them with like all of the resources, that, you know, and all of that to do that. Um, but it was really interesting even thinking, you know, through that, setting it up and trying to get that going. And I remember, <laughs> I remember, and this was 2017 we were doing this. I remember um, going to um, one of the big tech companies. Um, I was in the Bay Area and I was visiting one of them and I was talking to someone, in, uh, you know, on the VR team and I was telling them what we wanted to do. And I was like, by any chance, would you guys want to help? And the guy was like, nope. 
okay. he was like, no, we, we, we definitely will not help you. But if you get it done, we want to know about it. All ah, right. You know, okay. um, and then, but, but he was great. He gave me some advice, you know, mm-hmm. and, and was like, you know, definitely go for solo powder and stuff like that. Um, and I appreciated his candor because, you know, if anything in this space, you really don't want people who will waste your time. Yeah. Um, but I think it gives you a sense of like, for me, that really emphasizing the fact that what we need for ourselves, but mm-hmm. we must build because really nobody else is going to do that. Um, that said, uh, I want to highlight kind of like two um, startups that you should look out for mm-hmm. on the African continent. The first is Eden Labs of okay. Eden Africa based in South Africa. Uh, and they have a product called the Eden Snacker, which at this time is really geared towards um, like mass VR use, right? So mm-hmm. exhibitions and things like that. Where we know all know how it's been a little bit fiddly with the straps and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, how they haven't thought about my, my brains head. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So so they've kind of like circumvented that and created a solution where uh, check it out, you know, where you can kind of like hold your headset with this really great convenient ergonomic oh, really? yeah yeah like a selfie stick sort of <laughs> no yeah, almost but oh. not quite yeah and you hold it just hold it up to your face so really great for kind of like um the more bite-sized mm-hmm. or um exhibition like vr experiences that you might have and of course with the functionality for you know um group control and all yeah um and then the other company i want to tell you to look out for is um guza technologies mm-hmm. um in ethiopia and they are, <laughs> um, well, well, probably Eden Labs, my, my favorite mad scientists in the South, and these are my favorite mad scientists in, in the East, um, who are experimenting with all sorts of different things uh, with existing technology and technology they're building as well. I wouldn't say more because I think they're about to kind of like share some things, but uh-huh, okay. definitely keep an eye out for those guys. Okay, okay. We'll, be, we'll be on the lookout. Okay. Um, so what are your thoughts about the metaverse? I mean, I mean, there's a huge buzz around it. I mean... <laughs> You know, especially with Facebook changing the name to Meta, everything is now Meta, Meta. I mean, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Do you see any benefits for for large scale um, adoption in Africa, um, or do you see any even use cases of, of in Africa in terms of the metaverse? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> so so probably the first thing is what the hell is the metaverse? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the hell is the metaverse? Um, and, and then like, what's the relation to XR? Mm-hmm. And for me, um, I I consider XR sort of like the gateway technologies into the metaverse, right? So um, in terms of how you'll access access experience, et cetera, et cetera. And so in that, you know, from that perspective, yay to all of the metaverse buzz, Mm -hmm. because of course people have had to think about XR. You know what I mean? There have been all these inbound requests. Judith, can we pray for (laughs) XR? Judith, is this what you were talking about? You know? (laughs) Blah, blah, you know, things like that. So so there's curiosity, which is good, because mm-hmm. I think conversations always lead to possibilities, you know, and all and of that. opportunities, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that the focus will also mean that, you know, um, people cannot discard the African continent anymore. Sure. Um, and and that's really good. So so I'll give you some some examples. Um, you, you talked about Meta. Obviously, mm-hmm. that name change mm-hmm. <laughs> got us on a roll in terms of all of the hype and the buzz. But alongside that, Meta also announced that it was investing significant resources in the metaverse. Um, And that um, I think one of the first announcements was that it was going to dedicate maybe 50 million. I think it was last year that they were talking about. Uh Um, But what was interesting was that, you know, they had reached out to a few folks um, to say, oh, okay, we know we can't like do that. And it only goes to one part of the world. So we've got to include Africa. Uh, which is brilliant. And and one of the first things that came out of that for the African continent is that um, we worked with African No Filter, Meta, Meta and Electric South, um, this fantastic nonprofit in South Africa that does incredible work um, introducing art- African artists to the immersive technologies and supporting them in production. Um, we worked with them uh, to create a, a grant for African XR creators. Um, okay. So... The awardees were announced on Monday, I believe. Um, So six um, African artists have got grants of up to $30,000 to create an XR experience that will be released this year. Wow, that's big. It is. Well, I I mean, it's not being area big. It it is is. actually (laughs) big because if you know anybody that has done XR productions on the continent, the thing they will tell you is to get funding for it has been bloody. There is no other way to describe it. I mean, 30,000 is not the greatest amount, but even that somebody saying on the African continent, yeah. here's 30,000, 
is a first step. We definitely need more to happen, but mm-hmm. it's a first step. And once that first step has happened, then the next will come. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, as someone who's considered an expert in this XR space, I mean, we've talked about all the great side, great sides of it. Are there any drawbacks? Like, you know, I mean, and again, I, I noticed that because when I go online, I don't really see any articles around, okay, what's going to be the long-term effect? I mean, mm-hmm. my goodness, it's a bit like people, you know, being scared about getting the, the vaccine. Um, so, I mean, it, with this huge adoption, and if it does come, are, are we going to see, like, long-term effects? I don't know, to, to, in terms of your, I mean, so even as simple as um, your eyesight, your vision, and then before we even start considering more psychological impact on, on the brain and the way, I, I mean, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm just asking a question <laughs> that I, I think should be asked. Well, XR kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, so, I mean, no, but this is a really, really important question because mm-hmm. I think for the longest time, humans have just done. And then when the unintended consequences come up, we're like, oops, and mm-hmm. then our planet dies, you Absolutely, know? Yeah. And I, I don't think we, at least as we get more and more conscious, we don't want that situation. Yeah. So people are thinking about those, you know, issues that you mentioned. It's certainly something that we think about, you know, at the World Economic Forum on the Global Future Council and in several other groups that, you know, I, I'm part of um, that are exploring these technologies. Okay. The honest truth is that we don't know a whole lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, this technology in the sort of like mass consumer space, you know, it'll, it'll only be 10 years soon. You know, yeah. we're not even there yet. Yeah. So a lot of learning is happening, but also a lot of research has to be done. And this is where, you know, it's it's important again that, you know, Africa is part of this. Own, yeah. yeah, because we have to do our own research. We Absolutely. have to figure out what will work. We have to understand things in the context of where we are, you know, and who we are. Yeah. Um, but But we know some things, I mean... With the majority of headsets, for example, there's already sort of like um, a, a minimum age okay. um, for some of them, which is 13. Okay. Um, because, of course, there's concerns about much younger children using the headsets, sure. um, a number of them. Um, you'll see most VR experiences limited time. So the, the presumption is not that you'll spend hours and hours in VR mm-hmm. um, at this stage. Um, there have been things around like the weight of headsets, for example, and, yeah. and their effects. We um, also have heard stories of people who have been in VR and have forgotten that they're in VR wow. and have, <laughs> yeah, hurt each other. I mean, and, and I understand. It's not funny. I mean, I'm laughing, but it, no, I mean, that I could have some, I mean, some dire, dire, dire impacts for your life. You so, know? so, for example, one of the my one of my favorite things to do right now in, in um, VR is play table tennis. Um, mm-hmm. And you know how it is, like you're you're whacking the ball and then you want to go for that shot and you're like, yeah, I'm almost Superman <laughs> and yeah, yeah, you might end up somewhere else, yeah. you know, but things like that. So so there have been, I guess, injuries like related to that. Okay. Um, but I think we're still doing sort of like significant research to find out okay. um, what exactly should we be doing? What should we know? Yeah. And of course, they're, you know, I think everybody is, well, not everybody, um, but there's certainly people thinking about things like um, safety in mm-hmm. virtual spaces, about privacy as well. Yeah. We all know issues around data. Um, so lots to think about and lots more to be done. Great, great. So, that, <clears throat> I mean, we've come to the end of the official question. So we're going to ask you three compulsory, in quote, interesting questions, right? Okay. All right. So let's talk about predictions. What's the last prediction you got wrong? <laughs> Could be anything. Could be anything. That yes. people would give me money to change Africa with XR. Like, yeah. you, you really thought that was going to happen? <laughs> How naive can you be? <laughs> okay, okay, that's um, well, that, you No, know, no, I really thought that, I thought that, you know, when I was starting out, that there would be, that people would get it mm-hmm. much, you know, much quicker than they would. Because for me, Africa is the workforce of the future. It is. Um, and if these technologies are, are going to shape the future, then it, for me, it's like a no brainer that we better make sure, yeah. you know, everybody like has access and understands. and. Yeah. That wasn't quite the case, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, Africa is the workforce of the mm-hmm. future. When you consider our median age yeah. uh, and looking mm-hmm. at the, uh, the median ages of other continents and the talent flight and people living, you know, yeah. so it is it is the engine. Um, okay, so the next question. What's one view you seem to have that people don't agree with? So what's a view that you have that people, yeah, no, we don't agree with that really. That people don't agree with. Don't agree with. with, yes. Huh. I mean, 
I I I don't know if um people don't well, don't agree per se, but I don't think I hear really people saying it. Okay. But I think that Africa should be planning. Doesn't have to be about XR. Oh really? Yeah yeah yeah. Well, no no. It doesn't have to be anything. It could be Jello fries. It could be I don't know anything. Okay, it could be Jello fries. It could be anything. Um, one view that I have that people don't really. Uh, hmm. So from the exile space, I think that Africa can and should think about when I say global domination, it doesn't quite sound right, yeah, but sounds you know, a bit like pinky on the brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> it, no, no, no. But what I mean is that we we should think about like becoming the very best in the world. Um, and yes, we are starting like you know uh, maybe the starting line <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> a few miles back, you know, and everything and all of that. Um, but, you know, I think with a concerted effort, a little bit of magic, because you always need that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, things might be possible. So so I think that we should find some elements of this, some area mm -hmm. and and okay. kill it. Yeah. Okay. Good African magic. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then something that um, I believe in, that not everybody believes. Uh, I really believe that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds kind of like me, not really me, no, but just, like I feel. I think that if you so so, <laughs> this is particularly when I'm I'm doing stuff with people mm -hmm. that if you are not going to like achieve, you know, aim to achieve excellence, you should stay in bed. Oof, that's deep. <laughs> Which is, that said, that said, just to say that the excellence can be whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it might be having a good time, oh, but yeah, for, oh, fair aim for excellence. Right. Some yeah. of us are very excellent at having good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we we often say disruption is interrelated. So we tend to get the previous guest um, to ask a question to the next guest. Okay. So we're gonna ask you the question that, um, from the previous guest. Now. Okay. And he and um, this was the chief digital officer of the Nigerian exchange. Okay. Right. And he wants to know how many years would it take from now for Nigeria to be among the top 10 economies in the world? Aha. How many years from now? So mm -hmm. it depends on whether we do that global domination thing that I was talking exactly, about. Yeah, right? You know, so mm -hmm. you're not too far. Away, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how many years? I don't know. I don't think I'm good at predictions like that at all. Yeah. I, I don't guess. think. So I should just throw a number out there. Yeah, we uh, can discuss the number. <laughs> 150. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That is huge. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I think we just move on from that. <laughs> you, know, like, you just killed me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, well, you can divide it by 10 if you want to. No, it's okay. We'll take your word for it. Um, it's okay, so at the, our current pace, that's that's what I, that's the caveat. At our current pace, wow. is this but we Nigeria can or this. Africa? Just just trying to dimension this. In <laughs> <laughs> if I may, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was that was probably super harsh. But like top ten economies, it, it's probably going to happen much sooner than that, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to happen much sooner than that because of the shift towards digital okay. and just because of the fact that. Digital is allowing so much more independence in terms of what's happening. Yeah. So, I mean, that was tongue in cheek, it, yeah, it's fine. you know. Um, <laughs> but that said, um, I mean, I think the way we think about economies will, will change. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I yeah. think that that's going to change significantly. And I don't think it will be the same parameters that we're thinking about today in like yep. 20 or 30 years. Yep. Um, yeah, so okay, we'll cool. see. So finally, um, what's one question or one view you'd like to get from the next guest? We don't know who the next guest is, but okay. just, you know, what, what, what would you like? What, what, do you have a question you want to ask him or you, you'd like him to answer him or her, I should say. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so for the next person, um, I would like to know if they are interested in um, um, sort of like planetary exploration. Mm. Um, and if they are, why? And if they're not, why not? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's a nice, nice question. Well, this brings us to the end of the experience pod. Thank you for your time, Judith. It's been a lovely conversation, <laughs> a very, very fun one as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you. And feel free to come back anytime. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you.